Senator Lil Holton, if I know one thing, just one thing, it's health. That's right. I know all there is to know about health. Some consider me to be an expert on health. Others consider me to be the world's foremost authority on health. So if you want to know about health, you came to the right place. Now, health can mean a lot of different things. So let's get into all of them, you know, because when people talk about being healthy, I think a lot of that has to do with physical health. So that is part of it. And I think that's a good place to start. So physical health is important. I mean, you can't have any of the other aspects of being healthy without being, at the very least, alive. So physical health is going to play a part in that. And for a lot of people, that's going to basically get comfy here. Get comfy. <laughs> so that's basically going to be a couple of things. Ah, there we go. I'm leaning back now. So two things come into physical health. One, activity, exercise. The opposite of what I'm doing right now. I'm lounging out, chilling. So physical activity. If all you do is lounge out, chill, and don't do anything, you might not be healthy. And the other thing is nutrition. So if all you eat is candy bars and ice cream, well, you might not be healthy. Now, if you go ahead and eat a bunch of <laughs> dried fruit and nuts, you might be healthy. Um, but everybody already knows about that type of being healthy. Everybody already knows that you can be healthy by, you know, working out, being active, and eating right. There's no mystery there. And, and that sums that part of being healthy up. I mean, work out or be active and eat stuff that's good for you. No mystery. And yeah, there are ailments that you might come across and you should, you know, treat them accordingly. But they'll probably come up less if you're healthy. I mean, if you're active and eating right. So what are the other types of health? And, and this is what makes up your overall health. So the other types, one that's important for a lot of people is emotional health. So emotional health is going to be, it's probably, probably for most people, it's going to be a combination of uh, the external factors, the people who you interact with, as well as what you're thinking, your internal monologue, what, what you think of yourself. So emotions are... They're unusual because sometimes people can become overwhelmed by their emotions or they can let their emotions get the better of them, as they say. And and when that happens, um, people can lose control. And um, it's I wouldn't say that's necessarily a healthy... I wouldn't say that's necessarily a healthy activity to let your emotions start to get the better of you. I mean, it's there's not too many ways to say that. I mean, it could be any type of emotion. And anything could cause it. It could be that you cared about somebody, they passed away. It could be that, I mean, legitimate, that's a legitimate reason to be upset. And, or it could be that, you know, relationship problems or whatever. Emotional health could be a lot of different things. Or could you, you just, you could be just sitting there and just not liking something about you or about your, you know, whatever. Or, or it could be, it doesn't even need to make any sense. You could just get emotional about anything. You could see, I don't know, a, you could see a bunny rabbit and start crying for no reason. Okay. It, they, it's still just emotional health. So that's something that I think in order to work on that, people need to be very aware of 
not only uh, what they're doing, but how they're processing that. So that's that's a big one. And as you know, s- stress can have physical responses. So all of these are kind of linked. Like your emotions could cause stress, which could have a physical response, and that could make you not healthy physically. So for a lot, and so for. For a lot of these, they're all kind of connected that I'm about to address. Spiritual. That's what I'm I'm going to go to next. Spiritual health is... uh, For a lot of people, that means religion. But that could also just mean understanding your place in the cosmos. um, You know, what the meaning of life is. Why are you alive? What happens when you die? These kind of things are are very spiritual questions. Um, Existence, you know? What is life? Those are things that... um, Spirituality is very... uh, Existentialism comes to mind uh, when, when you think about this. It's like... What is the meaning of life? And that doesn't have to be answered by religion, but spirituality is... uh, Spiritual health can be very important to people. And coming up with those answers can be equally important and often unattainable. So a lot of these things require you know, belief and things like that. So, so when you think about that, it's um, one of the more difficult, um, difficult aspects of health to really um, get under control because... You might not find the answers to it. And and the quest for those answers is often uh, the spiritual journey, as they say. So I think that's what a lot of people do, need to do is embrace the journey and understand that, you know, you, there will be things you don't know. And, and that's okay. And that's important to a lot of people, the spiritual aspect. Things that are important to people are going to affect their health. So for a lot of people, occupational health, you've heard of this before. A lot of people define their life by their job. And um, and if their job is very unpleasant and five-sevenths of their adult life, they're spending doing it, in most cases, they get the weekend off. I mean, that's a lot of... Uh, it's a lot of weight to be in terms of time and time equates to life. That's a lot of life that is devoted to some endeavor. And so occupational health is important, but that is something that you can change and you can understand. So if you don't like your job, you can quit and get a new one. Um, and hopefully, and uh, I may want to line that up in advance, but that's something that's, uh, you have more control over it than something like spiritual health, for instance. And occupational health is something that I'm sure is uh, is more important to adults than it is to those who are not expected to necessarily have occupations yet, such as uh, kids or retired people. Retired people don't necessarily need an occupation, but they need something to occupy their time. So that could be considered in that um and that would be you know something that could occupy your time is is the social health so social health is very important because they say you know the worst thing you can do to somebody in jail in prison and these are like in like maximum security where you're surrounded by like like the worst people rapists murderers like people you probably rather not be around and the worst thing you can do to anybody in jail is lock them away from them in solitary confinement. So the worst thing, that's the worst thing you can do. So social health is important. And I think a lot of people, um, you know, they say, I don't care what anybody thinks. But that doesn't mean that you still don't value those interactions because you could not care what they think, but you want them to think something. You don't want them to just lock in a box and be like, man, we forgot about that guy. We locked him in that box. It's dark in there. (laughs) He can't see. I think they give you lights nowadays, but in most countries anyway. I'm sure there's a lot that still don't. The um, social aspect is very uh, important. And and the, the solitary confinement, that one goes to environmental health as well. So your environment is um, 
that's going to play a direct role with your health because that could affect your physical health, um, your mental health. Everything is going to be connected to the environment. So that's, again, something to an extent you can change. I mean, you might not be able to become an astronaut, but you could um, change your environment. And I think that, that a lot of people feel like they have to be in the environment they're in. And there could be actual physical consequences to that environment, depending on where you are. Um, it definitely could affect your health. And I'd say it could affect it positively or negatively. The, um, the most important thing out of all of these... Um, all of these different levels or d dimensions of health are the most important out of all of them is, is uh, intellectual. Intellectual health is really important because that's going to make you feel like uh, progress and growth. And when you're aging, it's important to, to experience growth and progress. If you have no intellectual growth and and your body is aging and growing and your mind is not, I mean, it's um, that inverse relationship is going to cause. I mean, it's going to cause problems because, first of all, I mean, he, <laughs> at the very least, you should be considering, hey, I know how to take care of my body better now. And it might not be as resilient, so I need to be focusing more on my nutrition and uh, my physical health. So your intellectual health can, you know, knowing more can help you, you know, live a healthier lifestyle. But aside from that, knowing more, um, it, it goes to it goes to everything. Knowing more about how you can handle your emotions. Knowing more about. <clears throat> God or the universe or however you define your spirituality, um, knowing more about your job, knowing more about your friends and the people who are around you, who you live in the world with, or knowing more about your environment. All of these things uh, come back to your intellectual health. And that's why I would say if, if you really want to focus on one, that's the one that um, that really connects and ties them all together. Because you could be you could be super strong and and have great endurance and eat phenomenally and you know your body might live for a really long time but as a vessel for what as a vessel because your mind is who you are and your intellectual growth is is going to be the growth of you and i think if you just ignore that and say i'm going to focus everything on making sure this machine just runs indefinitely without any particular course. It'd be like, yeah, let me repair this this car that just drives wildly and doesn't know what it's doing, but it'll drive for a really long time. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Where's it going? So I think the intellectual health is going to help, help you realize what you got to do, when you got to do it, where you got to do it, who you want to do it with, all these things that make up life you know so intellectual health is the most important aspect when it comes to the dimensions of health to living life in a way that you find some fulfillment you find satisfying because in the end of the day when you get across the finish line even if if your physical health isn't that great i mean that's what happens to everybody at the end i mean i forget who it was said yeah this this old body, this needs to come in with some skid marks on it at the end. This, I don't want some pristine body at the end. I want, I want it to show that it, it had lived life to the fullest. And you know what? I got to say, if, if your whole mission in life is just to make a beautiful corpse, I mean, that's just, that is morbidly, it's just bizarre. So I'm not saying to take crazy risks and, you know, jump off a moving train here. But I'm saying that... I'm saying that if you know what you want to do, you know, take some risks if you need to take risks. And 
you know, expand your mind because that will expand all of the other areas and, and be aware. And if you are focusing on your intellectual health and your, and your awareness is, you know, if you're all there, if you're there in the moment and you're there when you need to do what you need to do and you're able to do, to enjoy it, well then what more is there in life than enjoying it with the people? I mean, that's where the social comes in with the people who want to enjoy it with you. So enjoy your life, enjoy it with people who enjoy it with you and, you know, live a long, happy life. Oh yeah. And healthy.